Good day, good night. Shalom, balance. Wassalam, Hotep, Niha, <laughs> all of the universal greetings. Back in the lab, diligently working hard. Returning guest, the one and only, allegedly Dave, Dave Murphy. Welcome back to the broadcaster. Hi there. I'm glad to be back. Indeed. Man of infamy, man of uh, many talents, um, a, a man of much wealth. So I thought I'd take the opportunity on this particular build to, um, to tap into a resource of yours, um, which is very poignant and answers so many questions in regards to um, Afro-Caribbean and West Indian people, you know, in regards to mm -hmm. the genesis, like who, who are you people, you know, where do you come from, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> all of the various iterations of our of our names being from Car Car um, West Indian, Caribbean, Caribbean, Black, British, Black, British, Afro, British, and all of these various terms which have been thrown at us every 10 years or so. I thought I would I would um, allow you to um, change some of the the ideas um and challenge some of the the propaganda which is out and also flip some people on a total 180 in regards to he only left you basic instructions before leaving earth and the relevance of that manuscript um to us as a nation mm. wow okay um well uh yeah the it's interesting that uh, yes they do um give us all sorts of different names every every 10 years or so um with good reason because they want to keep us off balance they want to keep us like not knowing who we are you know um every so often you know we've got a different name so it's like yeah are we are we are we blacks are we negroes are we um afro caribbeans or what are we you know who who knows you know <laughs> you know it, it goes along with this idea that we don't have a history we don't have a heritage we don't have a homeland we don't have you know our own language we don't have anything really that's that's basically the um the programming behind it mm -hmm. but the the truth is and uh, i just i think i freaked out um uh uh, an American guy was talking about this too. Um, the most accurate names that we have for ourselves are British mm -hmm. and and Jacobite, and yes. not British because we we you know we live here. Um, British because of what the, the word actually means. Mm -hmm. You know, the word British is a Paleo Hebrew word, and it means you know it's it's two words: Briat Aish which is Hebrew um, man, or not Hebrew, sorry, covenant man, okay? Right. It means man of the covenant. It's the covenant between Abraham and the Most High. Yeah. Uh, I got mixed up there. I said Hebrew man. That's actually Irish. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the word Irish is, is Iberish, okay? Ah. So again, Aish means man, mm -hmm. just like British, you know? Um, Iba is a, is a corruption of the word that, uh, that means Hebrew. Okay. It's the same word as, as Ibu and Igbu, Igbu and yeah. Ivri and Ewe. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're all just corruptions of the same word, which means Hebrew. Does that derive um, from Eber crossing over? Um, yes. Cause, cause Iba was the, uh, progenitor of the, 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 the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there are people who say, oh, it's Abraham. He was the first Hebrew. No, oh. um, <laughs> there was a, the Tower of the Tower of Babel incident mm -hmm. uh, where everybody lost their language or lost the original language. Yes. Except the Israelites. The Israelites were able to keep their their language. Um, and, you know, it was in a time of Eba. So, so the Hebrews kept the original Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. Mm. And why that's important is because it turns out that Paleo Hebrew, that language, is the language of creation. It's the language that the Most High created with, and it's a, it's, it's a powerful language. Yeah. Um, I found in a uh, I can't remember what the book was. I think it's a, there's a book 
called the writings of abraham it's uh it's or origins are a bit murky but um you know all these books have have uh you know some truth in them oh yes so it talks about nimrod and how nimrod got powerful um and you know the story says that he was given the secret combination i'm proposing that the, it was a secret combination of words you know using this language of creation he had the secret um, combination of words to you know effect, affect reality and because he had this power he he was able to to have this tower built mm. you know he was able to become the king of the world yes right so so the the language is is ex extremely powerful um and it's also why um, whenever the hebrews the hebrew israelites were were enslaved they um the first thing the enslavers did was was make them learn their language yes so so their language got taken away so anyway um <laughs> going right away from the, the question <laughs> um yeah so um our history obviously starts um with the uh, with the israelites um but at some point uh, and I can't remember, I don't, we don't know whether it was, uh, um, you know, before the, uh, before the end AD. of, um, no, 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 um, going way back before that. Okay. Um, it was either um, during the Exodus mm -hmm. or at some point after some of the Israelites got back into the land, um, a whole group of Israelites went across um, Southern Europe and they were called the Iba yes so so the same again same word as igbu and ibu and, and and that it means they were hebrews but they called themselves the iba or heba or hyba or whatever but um they would name a place after themselves the iberian peninsula you know, that, iberian peninsula which is spain and portugal mm -hmm. um and then some of those those people um left that place and founded another place um which i've already mentioned hibernia which is uh which is ireland and um and then some people left ireland and founded another place which the name um that still survives is hebrides so Whoa. you can see the progression yeah. yeah um so so literally the original irish and the original scottish um, when I say original, um, I think they're before the uh, Iber actually got there, the Iberians or the Celtiberians, as they've been called. Mm -hmm. Before they got there, um, there were Canaanites there. They were called the Picts. And they were uh, depicted as the blue people, wasn't they? Yes. Um, okay. So there were Canaanites there first, and and then you got the Iber, the, uh, who, who, who were um, essentially... Judites, they were of the line of Zara. Um, so there were two brothers of um, from Judah's line. Um, Phares was the kingly line, but uh, the younger brother, Zara, um, his line basically um, traveled, traveled the world, basically. Um, so it was a line of Zara that, that uh, got into Ireland and then into Scotland. Um, so a so a side mm. question, um, Dave. Yeah. Are you aware of the mummified baboons and and stuff that are in in um in Northern Ireland? And it was, no, was I'm a, not. The yeah. Okay. So this this might give you some additional research. There's a, there's mummified baboons and exotic creatures in, in Northern Ireland somewhere, and there's a tale. I don't know how much how verified this is. There was a princess that's buried there as well. Oh, Tia Tefi, I think. That's the, the yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, because, uh, uh, again, t the, there's so much to this story. Um, there were successive uh, waves of people coming to, to Ireland, um, including, I think it was the Prophet Jeremiah who, who went across, um, again, um, but I, I'm concerned with the, the large group, large movements of people rather than you know yes. specific little Indeed. Um, things but uh but yeah so the original irish 
black people and they were the original Israelites. Um, and I said they were the Iba, yeah. So, um, so as I said, uh, Ireland was known as uh, Iberland. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the thing is that um, the, um, the Germanic people and the, um, uh, okay, Germanics and the, the uh, Canaanite types um, couldn't, couldn't pronounce one of our letters. Now, um, one of our letters was called, well, the, the, the pronunciation is more like um, wow, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in English, it comes out as either U, W, um, sorry, uh, V, W, or B, okay? B? Depending on, yeah, depending on how you pronounce, um, how you can, you know, you form letters, like, uh, you know, some people can't say certain things. Yes. Right? It, it either came out, this, this letter, wow, either came out as a W, either a V, or a B, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Germanics, okay, the, no, sorry, the Canaanites, um, couldn't pronounce, uh, hang on, Vs. So right now the, the Russians, right, they, they say would say vodka or vodka instead of vodka. Yes. Yeah. The, the Germanics couldn't pronounce, you know, W. So they, you know, we will, we will capture, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> they can't say. Um, and I say, um, and I can't remember how the Bs come into it, but uh, B and V got mixed up and stuff. So the Iberish would be pronounced um, Iverish, oh, right? Or Iwerish. <laughs> it makes so, so much it, sense. Yes. Yes. So now, you know, because this country is, you know, England is, is German, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just um, found a map um, well, a couple of days ago um, uh, of, uh, it was of uh, Jutland, which is part of um, Germany. And, um, and obviously the Germans, uh, German invasion um, partly came from this, this area, Jutland. And this old map calls this area of Jutland, uh, there was two names, um, Anglen, so Angle with N on the end, Anglen, or it said the home of the English. Wow. So the English weren't here, you know, they weren't in, they weren't sort of uh, indigenous. No. They came from Germany. Okay. <laughs> so the English, the English came from Germany and called this place England after they took over it. Um, so, so I'm, I'm I've kind of lost my thread where I was now. Actually. <laughs> I've got so many things in my head going. This is it. This is it. When we go down these rabbit holes, there's so many different connections from places, person, persons, and things that that interweave themselves into the grand story. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so, yeah. Um, so we, you've got the you've got the Irish, you've got the um, the, the the Black Scots. Um, and there's lots of evidence of, of these people um, being black, um, especially from the 1700s. There's, um, there's books um, that, that literally describe, um, describe the Scottish, for instance, in the, in the Scottish Highlands as all being black and yeah. been indistinguishable from, from, you know, Africans. Yes. Um, I think one of them is called Journey Around the... Uh, Western Isles of Scotland with Samuel Johnson by by uh, um, Boswell, I think it, Thomas Boswell, um, and in that um, Samuel Johnson has a, a manservant called Francis Barber, a black manservant, and at one point they're on the Isle. I think it was the Isle of Skye, mm -hmm. and um, his manservant went to speak to one of the locals. <laughs> and Samuel Johnson remarked that he couldn't tell the difference between his manservant and one of these Scots. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's so, so much, so many references to do it. Um, the other thing I found out was that um, Britain, you know, the part we call England today, mm -hmm. um, was founded by a black Hebrew Israelite. He was a, uh, a prince, uh, a Trojan prince called Brito, okay, um, or Brutus, as it Brutus, was uh, yes. Anglicide. I was going to say, so, yeah, I recognise that name. 
Right. So Brutus um, escaped the fall of Troy with 300 ships and um, and he sailed, he sailed to England and landed in Totnes. Um, and in, in the street, in 4th Street in Totnes today, there's a stone right in the street there called yes, the Brutus Stone. Yes, yes. And that was, that was the stone he first set foot um, on, this, on, this, um, on this land. Um, so, yeah, Brutus arrived and he found that uh, this country was overrun with red-headed giants. Okay. Uh, this was in 1103 BC, turns out. Mm-hmm. Um, the Scots, uh, the, sorry, the Irish were already here because uh, apparently, according to the, uh, the, the stories from Geoffrey of Monmouth and the Welsh Chronicles, uh, he was met by a group of Welshmen um, who were already, obviously already here, yes. who, 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 who actually greeted them as brethren. So, um, mm. so they cleared the land of all these red-headed giants. Um, and except for one, they left one alive. They actually had to nurse this, uh, this giant back to health because one of um, Brutus's men, a guy called Corinius, wanted to fight him. Wanted to <laughs> hand-to-hand combat with this giant. So um, they had this epic battle yeah, um, hand-to-hand combat on Plymouth Ho. Um, and uh, according to the story, um, the the giant, whose name was um, Gog Magog, wow. um, grabbed Corinius and got him in a bear hug and broke his ribs. And Corinius was apparently so enraged that he managed to grab up this giant and throw him off, over a cliff. Jeez. And and the place was called Lamb Go Mago um, after that, because of it, that means, I think it means um, Giant's Leap, right? And, and ever since then, up until the 1700s, there was a, a chalk, one of those chalk um, hillside drawings mm-hmm of two giants fighting yes and um, yes i've seen the imagery for that yes yes um they, they were planning to uh, have them redone because they, it was changed in the 1700s uh so yeah just recently they were talking about um you know resurrecting those those chalk drawings um and also to this day when they um when the lord mayor's parade in london um comes around they parade two giants called Gog and Magog, which uh, really is is Gog, Magog, and Corinius. But you know they lost the story the whole, you know, somewhere along the years. Um, and Corinius ended up; um, he was given the land of Cornwall. So Cornwall bears the name of essentially bears the name of Corinius. Yeah. Um, so so yes. So um, what we had was. Um, a black land it was it was literally a completely black land um now it got sort of uh, uh not infiltrated but um the uh the anglo-saxons was were often brought in as as fighters yes because so you know fighters for against uh, these enemies and so the anglo-saxons were used as as, as fighters and soldiers and some of them stayed mm-hmm. stayed here mercenaries and, yeah and so more and more of them started to stay and uh you know eventually they they took power um it was it was um and I'm, i've sort of jumped ahead a bit but it was king james you know we've all heard of king james the mm-hmm. king james bible well king james was uh um he was the king of scotland and, and england he was able to um uh oh I've, I've i've just stopped oh no there you go <laughs> i thought i just thought i just froze um yeah he he was the one who united all the tribes of uh england ireland scotland wales and uh and france actually um so when he became king he basically brought all those all those kingdoms together in one um now they were all kingdoms of jacob yeah, they're all kingdoms of Jacob. So um, that's why we have the Union Jack, 
That's what it means. It means the reunification of Jacob. Jacob rather than Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> the people who supported um, King James, when King James was taken off, King James on his line was taken off the throne, those people who supported him were called Jacobites. Yes. And wasn't, so, the, wasn't he referred to as the black boy as well? Well, that was King Charles II. Oh, you know, okay. he, was, he was so dark, he was called the, the black boy. <laughs> and, you know, there were pubs all over uh, the country called the Black Boy Inn. Yeah. Um, now they've all been sort of uh, either whitewashed or the, <laughs> the uh, um, yeah, the reference has been changed to like a chimney sweep or something yes. like that. But, you know, but yeah, it's there to hide the, you know, the, the fact that these were, these were black people. Mm -hmm. So when, when there was... Um, Okay, when the, the, the white bloodline, the white Germanic bloodline took over this country, uh, that happened after the, uh, I believe after um, Charles II was deposed, um, a Germanic bloodline took the throne and it was mm -hmm. William of Orange. Yes. Um, okay, so, and he was, he only married into the bloodline because I believe he married, uh, um, he married the daughter of, Charles, I think, uh, not Charles, uh, of James. Um, so he was, on, you know, that that bloodline got in, you know, through through marriage. Yes. So it was, it's not the real bloodline. Mm -mm. Um, so um, when he and took this over, is, this is post. Um, this is post Queen Charlotte of Strasbourg. Uh, that's the thing. I, I I can't remember. I can't remember where she fits in actually. Because she's um, the great grandmother of Queen Victoria, right? Yeah, she come. She came much later. Okay, she came much later. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, after after um, uh, Charles II was deposed, um, William of Orange came in, and the first thing that, that they basically did was to attack Ireland and Scotland. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, there's a book by a guy called John Mackey. It's called the uh, the secret memoirs. Um, sorry, the memoirs of the secret services of John Mackey. Okay, John Mackey was a spy for William of Orange, and and his book was essentially. Oh, sorry, my phone. <laughs> um, yeah, um, his book was essentially um, uh, an inventory of the nobility of the of the UK. Wow. So he literally went round and he described in detail what all the nobility looked like, basically to find out who to kill, who to yes. get rid of, that sort of thing. Yeah. So in, in that book, it describes all these noblemen and it describes most of these noblemen as black people, mm. you know. So, you know, the Earl of Wessex is a tall black man, you know. <laughs> this is going to be the shocking thing to, to a lot of the listeners. They're going to be like, what on earth are you talking about, Dave? This doesn't make any sense. You Britain's white, white people and Anglo-Saxon people. How did that? You just got to do some research and you uncover this information. Um, because it's been hidden. It's been deliberately hidden. You know, they, they, did, they do not want this information out. They've never wanted it out. So, so yeah, it's it's not it's not going to be readily available, yeah. All all the artwork of um, you know depicting all the kings and yes. uh, noblemen have been repainted. Yes, whitewashed. You know, a guy called uh, Thomas Cromwell, he destroyed ninety seven percent of all artwork and documents and manuscripts and all that um, with any reference to any black people. Mm. So all the paintings and stuff you see now. Um, have, have been repainted. They're not the originals. They've just been repainted and whitewashed. Well, this is um, why we can we can go to Europe, um, Bavaria, Germany, etc., and we can see um, what's it? What's the name of it? It's there's a specific name to the Moorish artwork, you know, with the heads and all that. Mm, okay, yeah, you mean the, the heraldry? The heraldry. Um, that exactly, mm, exactly. Some yes. strange, slow people think that it was to mock black people but it was to not at all this was to show their reverence for the royalty and for the nobility yeah well more, more than that it's uh to show that uh, they were uh they were um aligned or or they were part of the uh the uh, israelite 
um, bloodline because um, if you notice on the heads of these uh, in in this heraldry, they would have a headband. Yes. Well, um, if you look in, I think it's Deuteronomy. Um, we're commanded um, to to wear a headband, and in that headband should be written the Torah. It should be written the, the commandments. And that's as a as a memorial. We're supposed to be able to, you know, take the headband off and read the yes. the, the, the commandments. So that's that the, those um, heads that show the headband is showing that these are Israelites. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, um, again, I'll <laughs> always lose my, <laughs> lose my thread. Um, yeah, where was I? Where was I on that? We was, we was, I interrupted you where you was talking about, um, the marrying into the bloodline. Right. And yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, the first thing they did was attack Island oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Sam corrected. You was talking about the whitewashing of the, of the of the imagery. That's where we got to. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, that, that I was saying then because that because uh, it's very difficult to to find this information because it's been very carefully hidden mm -hmm. because they they literally don't want um, they don't want this information out because if 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 the black people found out that they they came from nobility. Mm -hmm then they would be it'd be hard to enslave them keep them you know? enslaved mentally most definitely yes. I totally agree right so so they had to reduce them to to you know uh, this idea of sav savages running through the jungle and you know no no civilization until and, and until the slavers came and, and uh, civilized them. civilized the savages yes indeed, yeah so. yeah um so so yes um the first thing they did is the first thing they did was attack um, Ireland and Scotland. Basically, um, most of British history, all these wars, you know, the the civil wars, you know, the War of the Roses, all that. It's it's genocide. It's ethnic cleansing. It was to 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 basically clear. So um, when they attacked Ireland. I think it was they 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 uh, reduced the population. I think it was by 40, 40 something percent. Wow! So um, those men that they didn't kill in Ireland, they transported to their new colony in the Caribbean. Caribbean, yes, and a lot of them went to Montserrat. Montserrat, Barbados, Jamaica, um, literally most of the Caribbean. They 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 took these. They, they took the Irish. And the Scottish, once they attacked them, um, and uh, yeah, deliberately tran um, transported them over over to the these islands. The um, the women stayed mostly uh, for the most part, um, and because Cromwell couldn't pay his soldiers, he you know, didn't have enough money to pay his soldiers. Mm. He gave those soldiers, these Germanics, um, lands in yes. scotland and ireland mm -hmm. so these uh these soldiers ended up uh you know becoming like the the, the earl of cork or yes. whatever yeah mm -hmm. um and then you can you can sort of look at the look at the film braveheart mm. and you'll see there's a there's a section in it where the king says it, it's time to reinstitute an old custom you know we grant the grant our nobles prima nocta yeah, so whenever a common girl, you know, a black girl, um, was was to get married, our nobles, yeah, the white Germanics, will have um, will have sexual rights to her on the night of her wedding. Wow! So that would ensure that the firstborn of that union, yes, would would be half caste. Indeed. So any lands owned by still owned by uh, by you know the people there. Well, now um, there's a there's a claim to that claim directly by Belodus connection. Right now, um, the what would happen is the the lighter skinned people would get to stay. Yep. The darker ones would be transported to, uh, you know, to the Caribbean. So you do that for 300 years. Um, yes. And uh, and what you get is obviously these um, white people in uh, in Ireland, 
And from the perspective of anyone living in, say, Barbados, you'd get um, whiter and whiter people coming over. Yeah. Um, and those whiter people would get the preferential jobs, the overseer jobs yes. and stuff like that. Um, so, um, so yes, that's, that's what's been happening. I, I'm, I found the proof of it uh, in a book that's in the British Library. Um, there's apparently only two copies of this book left in this country, and one of them is in the British Library. And I, I went, I uh, got an appointment to go and see it. As you do, you can't just turn up. <laughs> yeah, as you do, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I went to see it, and I was in the quiet, the, you know, they've got these huge reading rooms, and it was dead quiet in there. And um, so I, I got this book and I started reading and I, I, I ended up laughing out loud because it's got the proof right in this book. Um, it, it basically said that uh, the author who was, um, he'd spent some time in Africa mm. and then he went to Jamaica and he was looking at these Jamaican, these black Jamaicans and, and wondering, well, you know, these, these Jamaicans are very different to the Africans that I just left. And they've all got Irish names. I wonder where they got these Irish names from. So um, he, looked, he looked at the, uh, the records, the land registry records, to see if he could find the names, you know, because he assumed that they got their names in slavery. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't find any of the names among the landowners. Which, which would make sense because it, it was an English colony. Yes. And at the time, the English were at war with the, with the, um, Span the Spanish, the uh, Scottish and the Irish. So there would not be any Scottish or Irish landowners over no, there. Not at all. Right. So he went back to England and he checked Oliver Cromwell's records of the deportees. He found all the names. Shh. So April literally, <laughs> literally, all the all the people, um, the the black Irish people, were transported directly over there with their names intact. Mm -hmm. um, I also found um, a a book uh, or reference about a, a slave ship called the Veteran. Okay, you can look it up. A slave ship veteran. Um, and on that slave ship, there's a, a prisoner manifest, and it still exists. And half the, the prisoners um, on that manifest are described as black people, and they're like Scottish and Irish black people. And this, this, this vessel was traveling from what, so Ireland or Scotland? I think it, was, uh, I think it might have been traveling from Liverpool to, uh, um, yeah, to, to the Caribbean. Wow. Uh, I think there was there was also a very famous uh, writer and lawyer. Um, I think his name was Hume, um, and you know, described as a black man, um, literally. You know, um, uh, yeah. This this manifest just says it all that uh, you know that these these were Scottish. Oh, they were Scottish, not Irish. Scottish prisoners um, who were Jacobites. Mm. Um, you know, so Here we go after, again. Yes. So after the, I think of the Battle of Culloden, Culloden, can't remember how to pronounce it, um, where the Jacobites actually lost, the prisoners of war mm -hmm. were taken to the Caribbean, and, and 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 literally the you know it describes them as as black people. So Dave, what, what here's a here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. The Caribbean is named after the Carib, allegedly is named after Carib Indians. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a set of Indians called the Arawak Indians. And then there's allegedly a third set, which I don't necessarily agree with this, the Tahino Indians, which I think were more on Central South America versus on the islands. Right. Were they actual characters? Were they beings or they, are these mislabeled Israelites? I... I um... I propose that there are actually Canaanites because the, the Canaanites um, were seafaring, um, yes. seafaring people. They were the prodig prodigious seafaring people. Um, and so they traveled all over the place, you know, a long time ago, long before many other people moved. So I believe, yeah, it's my, it's just my, um, mm. my intuition here, 
I believe most of the people that you'd call Indians um, were Canaanites because we were never really, um, you know, whenever our people went somewhere, they, they built cities. <laughs> Yeah. They built amazing cities and stuff. They built, you know, the, the, they sort of um, were, were, were civilized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Indians um, are, who who are around, you know, around the world um, who never built cities. Yeah. I, I think they were the Canaanites. Um, now in America, and this, this is what sort of, um, I, I, I guess, uh, supports that in my mind in America, there's um, lots of evidence of um, Paleo Hebrew, but not oh, yes, but not just Paleo Hebrew. It's a, a very specific type of script, which is um, Canaanite. Essentially, it was Paleo Hebrew is a language of pictures. So, mm -hmm. um, like the letter A is a picture of an ox head. So imagine um, the head Alice? of an ox. Yeah, well, that's Al it's just the ah sound. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, so it's a picture. So imagine a triangular face mm -hmm. with uh, ears out the side and horns. Yes. Okay. Um, now the Canaanites basically took that picture and standardized it. So they made a kind of V shape with a line through it. So the, the V shape is a face Aww. of the, is the triangular face. Yes. And the top of the V are the horns mm -hmm. and the line across it are the ears coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that's a script that's found in America. And people look at that and say, well, look, Hebrews are here. Well, the Hebrews and the Canaanites were sharing that script. So to me, I, th I, I think it was more Canaanites that were there using that same script. Okay. What about the evidence of the, uh, the mound builders and the elaborate two to three story buildings, which was on South and Central America when Columbus um, invaded the land? Right. Well, again, I, I'm, I don't have enough information. My, mm -hmm. my research has been um, in, the, uh, with, in the context of finding out who, who I am. Yes, and of course. Who are our people? So I don't. I didn't really spend a lot of time um, looking at what was going on in South America or, or even America. Mm. Um, more, I was. I was concerned with what's going on in in this country and the Caribbean. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think the the Indians, the original Indians, were Canaanites who'd got there a lot long, a lot earlier, um, and they were replaced. You know, once the uh, once we, you know, our people got there. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, so, so, so essentially that, that's, that's it. This, um, I found, I found references in old books that show, um, there's one book called The uh, Origins of the Anglo-Saxon Race. Um, there's a chapter, chapter seven called Our Darker Forefathers. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yes, and it's, it's literally, um, pointing to the the actual saxons who were you know who were black and black and brown and uh it says in this book that uh, the names you know the names Br brun yeah which means brown mm -hmm. yeah the surnames surnames are a recent thing um yes indeed so so literally the a surname would be given to somebody because of either where they lived yeah so you know at wood would mean somebody who lives at the woods you know mm -hmm. yeah um or, or brown might be because of what they look like or mm. um or you know um if if they were if they were uh, good at arm wrestling so he might be called armstrong you know <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah. So, so literally, you've got names like Brown, Black, Black, Blackerman, Blackman. You know, Blake. You know, it, they all mean the the person was black. Um, the uh, any name with uh, with uh, Wend in it, because the Wend were very black people. So uh, there are place names like Windsor. You know, Wendelsbury. Yeah um you know again brun yeah so brunswick means brown place you know um places called moor 
Yeah. Mm, Dartmoor, um, so, South, yeah. Broadmoor, yes, architecture. The yes. Yorkshire Moors were, mm-hmm. a, were a people. And you can find that in, um, I believe, a book called Sex and Race. Um, it, you, there's a page that shows the, uh, the, the crest, the heraldry for Sir Thomas More of Yorkshire. And uh, that, that book is in volumes, isn't it? From what I can remember, yeah, I can't remember which volume I'm, yeah. I'm talking about. I think volume mm. two, mm. um, yeah. So, so yes, the, the Yorkshire Moors were a people, not not a place. Now, okay, since you've re- re- you've gone down that route, um, and you've brought up those that titleage, the conversation of the Moors or the Black Moors. Were they, because we've got some people, especially in the wilderness of North America, who would say the Moors are a specific pe- specific set of Black people who were mainly Islamic, but there were some of them who practiced um, Judaism, quote-unquote, and there were some who practiced Buddhism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. W- what is your um, thoughts on that? Well, the problem is that uh, the word Moor has been kind of retroactively applied to black people. It, it literally just meant black people mm-hmm. rather than, um, you know, specific, you know, a nation uh, of people, Islamic Moors. Yeah. Um, so the, there were people who were called sort of retroactively called Moors well before there were actually Moors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, now um, I'm going to get this wrong, but the, even the word blacker Moor. Mm-hmm. I was was um, didn't actually mean black people <laughs> because the uh, the word black doesn't actually mean um, doesn't actually mean black. It means was it bleached out and pale? It means white. Yes, yeah. yeah so, so as you say, the the the, the Anglo-Saxon word um, black, right? Is uh, there's two words: b l a c and b l a e c. Yes. Um, Yes, it means um, to to lighten, um, bleach, to uh, you know, to to make pale, and leprosy. Yes, let's not forget the leprosy element of it. Indeed. Yes. So, um, so so literally, um, leprosy was a curse for for wickedness. Mm-hmm. So, along with um, along with the the physical um meaning of that uh, of that word you know to lighten and that was the figurative meaning which is you know to you know dark character you know um untrustworthy all these things you know um so that's why the word was applied to us essentially so it just flipped on us so you know um so that all those negative connotations were yes. put on us oh, it's um in fact um you know, we we started this with uh, saying about the the words that or the names that we uh, we we've been given. Mm-hmm. Um, so black is one of those words that was yes. was put on us, because um, uh, uh, again, figuratively, um, the, uh, the figurative meaning of the word was also to to darken, to put a stain on somebody. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so they gave us not only the word, the, the word, well, you know, for them, which was black, but they also gave us the other word for them, which was Slav. Oh, exactly. Slave. Yes, Slavic, Slav, Slovenia. Yes, indeed. Because, sir. Because, the, because the Slavs were Canaanites. The Slavs were, were the Canaanites of the land that ended up um, with the with the uh with the curse of um of, of leprosy yeah because there were canaanites ah. who left the land who didn't get the curse of leprosy but you will see in deuteronomy when the when the israelites were coming back into the land the most high says i will put the curse of leprosy or i will put leprosy in the house of the land of canaan mm. so so there were two lots of 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 Canaanites or, or yeah there were many groups of Canaanites but there's one group that stayed in the land which who were turned leprous yes okay so um so 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 yes they they literally put their names on us blatantly um, <laughs> yes so so yes um the one of the uh um bits of evidence for the Slavs being the Canaanites 
Um, well, not only did I find a, a map from the Middle Ages that showed um, the area, of kind of Russia and um, and part of Germany and stuff, it was called Big Canaan, and um, there was Germany, part of Germany was called Little Canaan. Wow. Yeah. Um, I found out that the uh, the original language of the Slavs was Canonic. I've heard that two words before. Okay, okay. Canonic, which is essentially yeah. Canaanite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, there's, a, there's only one other place in the world, apart from, you know, Europe, where there's a concentration of Slavs, right? And it turns out this place is known as, in Paleo-Hebrew, this is Canaan. Do you, want, do you want to guess where, where this place is? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't hazard a guess at the moment, Dave. My mind's right. all over the place. I'm, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a couple of clues, right? Okay. Because I want to, I'm just, I want to tease this out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so clue number one is, um, uh, okay, the word, the word for this is, is da. Okay. Deutschland, I don't know. I'm, I'm gone. Okay, nope. Okay, now um, the next clue is that people would name the place after them. Uh, I'm no. I'm going to pass okay. on this one, Dave. Can I, can last, I call a friend? Can last, I call a friend? No, no, no. <laughs> the last clue. Here's the last clue. Okay, last clue is is Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew is backwards to English. Yes. So put those three together and what do you get? I, I'm not fine. I can't, I can't see it. Okay. Canaan da. Oh, Canada. Canada. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so ca Canaan da, Can Canaan da means this is Canaan. And it happens to be the only other place apart from Europe where there is a high concentration of Slavs. Now, Canaan was 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 uh, cursed to become the servant of servants, mm -hmm. and that's where we get the word slave is from Slav. Yes. So, so you know, I'm 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 proposing that uh, one branch of the Canaanites became the Slavs. Um, and yeah, I, I basically did a bit more research and found that uh, the the Canaanites that um, were chased out by Joshua, they ended up um, going, you know, into northern Europe and where they became the Northmen or Norsemen. Norse, okay. Now, th again, Along. think about. Think about these Canaanites. They were they were cursed of, um, with uh, leprosy. Yes. So they would be um, their hair would be blonde. Their mm -hmm. skin would be very pale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they were Canaanites, and all the giants were Canaanites. Yeah. They would be, you know, on average taller than most people. Yes. They were the tall whites. Yeah, the Norsemen, the Northmen makes yeah. total sense so i looked in i looked into the uh the ancient history of uh of um uh sweden uh and scandinavia mm -hmm. and sure enough i found that uh you know there's a reference that says that the the the, the, the earliest scandinavians were canaanites <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so um it's been it's been this has been a fascinating like uh um you know like scavenger hunt Indeed. looking for clues and finding yes. all this stuff and this is what this is what i again have to reiterate the fact that this web takes you to so many different places but it's so interwoven woven that it, it still narrows you back onto the same path of your original subject matter what you were searching for mm -hmm. yes so um, I, I actually spent um, a good couple of years um, trying to figure out who the people, the people of the Old Testament, who they are now. And I, I pretty much found out who um, most most people are um, in that book. And it's, yeah, again, fascinating. As I guess there are people who have been um, 
would be a bit upset with some of the things I found out. <laughs> Oh, of <laughs> that, course. So, um, it shatters yeah. a lot of sensibilities, a lot of, um, you know, foundational knowledge of sorts, which they've been, you know, the world has been fed. And this totally t turns it on its head. It's like, wow. Yeah. I mean, one one that will upset people is the Moabites. Um, so the, the people of the of the Moabites in the, in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. um, now i don't know if you know the history of who the moabites were in the in the book um now you've heard of sodom and gomorrah exactly and uh, lot escaping yes. sodom and gomorrah he escaped with with his two daughters mm -hmm. um and they they went to live in a cave yes. because uh they you know they thought that uh, the whole world was ending essentially mm -hmm. so there's a part in the story where the two daughters um were, were talking and they decided like uh, well the world's ending and we haven't got children so what we'll do is we'll get our dad drunk yes and we'll get children from yeah mm -hmm. right so so um the oldest um made his dad uh, her dad drunk and uh you know had sex with her with him and um she gave birth to a child called moab and he moab. became the he became the uh the progenitor of the moabites Okay. The Moabites. Now, uh, some people would say that the Moabites are the um, the, the Chinese and Japanese. Yes, yeah, so because they were the Am Ammonites as well. So, I would say that they're the Chinese as well, because um, I started researching um, the effects. Yes, I know where you're going with this, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the effects of very close incest yes yeah um and you know i, I waded through a lot of uh, stuff that um i got down to there was a lot of uh, sites that saying oh then you know the, the <laughs> lot of sites are saying yeah incest um yeah has got nothing to do with down syndrome <laughs> Nothing to do with Down syndrome, but mm. I kept going, I kept digging and I found some you know, medical texts that were saying, yes, very close incest yes. has a higher, um, you know, a possibility of Down syndrome, mm -hmm. um, you know, having children with Down syndrome. Um, now, when you compare the um, physical characteristics of a Chinaman with the, you uh, with the um, uh, the symptoms of Down syndrome, they match exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, so so it it strikes me because the first again the first um, dynasties of China were black people. They were black with Chinese features. Zhen you know, or is it the Zhen dynasty or something like that? Uh, uh, yes, Jia and the the oh sorry zhang oh, i can't i can't remember sorry yeah 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 i know what you're there's going, two yeah. dynasties and they were they were both black mm -hmm. and um they're, they're shown in the uh the terracotta army if you look at the faces of the terracotta army you see uh these black you know black features with ch black and chinese features together yeah um and uh, and so yes when you when you realize where the the moabites were in relation to the Israelites, they were kind of on the east, to the east of the Israelites. Um, and they were chased out of their land, um, I think by David. Um, and if you, so if you, if you think where they were, when, when David would um, attack them, there was only one place, one direction they could go. Exactly. And that was, that was further east. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at ancient Chinese history, you find that, uh, you know, the, the first Chinese people, the first dynasties um, came from the West along the Yellow River, which is, again, the, where they would have actually crossed, I think they would have crossed to Iraq, no, Iran, yes. and ended up in, in China and followed the Yellow River. Um, yeah, so it all matches up. So, but, you know, you start <laughs> telling... Um, people that the, the Chinese were the Down syndrome, <laughs> December Down syndrome people, yeah, they get upset. But if you if you look at the book of um, Ruth, which is about a Moabite woman, 
Oh, the Moabitus. Yes, indeed. Yes, Ruth the Moabitus. Mm. Now, if you look at that and you look at how people were were re reacting, responding to Ruth, they were like, that they didn't know who she was, but they would say, oh, yeah, that's that Moabitus lady. Mm. It's just like, you know, today, we, you know, we could look at a crowd and say, oh, you see the Chinese woman over there? Yes. And we'd know exactly who it was. Because Indeed. So it, 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 you know, when I read Ruth and people are going, oh, yeah, that Mo oh, that's a Moabitus lady, isn't it? Um, it was the same way as we would say, oh, that, that's that Chinese lady, isn't it? Because we'd all know, we'd look at them and go, oh, that's yeah. that's a mobile, that's a Chinese one. Mm. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's again, it's it's a it's a detective, you know, a bit of detective work. It's like a, a, it's like a scavenger hunt. You know, you 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 get something, you know, you've got um, a, an idea you want to you want to sort of research. And, you know, you start finding all these pieces yes. and you put the pieces together and it, it leaves you to one conclusion. Mm -hmm. Most uh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that for before I even woke up and I, I, I discovered that in, in the manuscript, there's something called the Table of Nations that that itself just blew me away. I was like, what? It, this book has got a table of, and I read the read it and I was thinking, OK, but who are the people today? And as you said, I, I did it. You know, I spent a few years trying to do do a bit of research on it. This is <laughs> very early on into the age of the internet, where it was information, but not as much information there is now. Um, and yeah, as you say, it's it's a good exercise for you to be able to, you know, have a hypothesis, have an under an idea, and try and confirm it or deny it. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all well, about. Well, if you're going just with the um, with the the Bible, um, you know you're going to have a hard time because exactly. the Bible has been sort of eviscerated. Basically, mm -hmm. um, they've they've uh, you know hacked lumps out of it and uh, added their own book on top of it. Um, so you know if you if you if you read both books together and believe both books, then you're not going to understand the story. Yeah, the New Testament leads you away from the real story as it was designed to um but uh, if you 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 know chop out the new testament um add back the books that were supposed to be in there mm -hmm. um namely um the book of enoch of the book of jasher yes. and the book of jubilees yeah the apocrypha um and the, and the apocrypha yeah the um those three you know the first three books um those three books are essentially the detail for the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis is, a, is the most important book out of the, the lot. It's the foundation of the, of the whole story. Um, now, the book of Genesis is a, is a huge, you know, represents a huge, um, you know, swath of time, you know, from the beginning right to, the, to essentially Moses leading the people out of, uh, out of the land. So, I mean, that's, you know, thousands of years represented there. Yes. Um, so in Genesis, it's literally just a summary mm. of the events um, to get the detail of what happened in, in Genesis. You have to go to those three books. Definitely. Um, so um, Jasher is, is, is an amazing book. It truly is. Um, when you, uh, if you, if you were to listen to it on, cause you can go to YouTube and yes, uh, there's I a video. That. Yeah. Right. Well, the, the the video is thirteen hours long. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, one Sabbath, I, I I thought, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the whole lot. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I, I sat there for thirteen hours listening to it, and and that book is like a a, a Lord of the Rings adventure. Exactly. It's an, it's an amazing book, mm. and it tells you how powerful the you know our ancestors were you know, amazingly powerful and why, you know, we were so feared, you know, and why these nations felt they had to, they had to defeat us and get, you know, and, and, and almost dispose of us because we're so powerful. And also why they had to take the book out because they didn't want us to, to know who we were and, and possibly remember who, you know, our power. Book of Remembrance. Um, yes. That's why it's the Book of Remembrance. Um, so when you add those books back, 
Um, and Jubilees is a powerful one as well, because Jubilees gives you a timeline. It mm. tells you exactly when everything happened, which is powerful in itself. Um, so, yeah, when you add all these books in, you get a, a, a full, rich story that tells you not only, you know, what happened, but why things happened, you know. Um, and and yeah it re, it re, it's the book of remembrance so you will remem remember who you are when you when you read that book and recognize you in, y yourself in that book in the book exactly and if we if we look at psalms 83 4 mm -hmm. you'll know that uh, you know the plan exactly. that was put into action let's, so that we let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of israel will no longer be more in remembrance remembrance and and i think i think they you know in their rush to impersonate us mm. they inadvertently um kicked off that remembrance yes you know remember because it said the name of israel be mm. no more in in remembrance and yes for hundreds of years they hid the name of israel exactly until you know the 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 Jewish people decided to be be Israel. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, hmm, Israel. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. In 1948. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that's because you know it's just been recently that um, we've started to really wake up to who we are. Um, I know that uh, you know for hundreds of years there were there have been people um saying telling us yes you know we're israelites by the yeah. way you know yeah but it, it's never really it's never really caught on um but it's just been recently that you know i guess since 1948 yes that uh, our people have been going hmm israel that sounds familiar you know it does that's, that's waking up some some genetic memory here somewhere wait let me let me do a bit more research rather than listening to that pastor in the pulpit let me actually pick up this book and study to show that myself approved, you know, Yes. and let, let's look at the canonized, you know, or even let's go to the 1611 King J KJV and let's look at it in, in its entirety with everything in there. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is that uh, um, there is no such thing as the good Bible because they're all translations exactly. from a language that can't be translated. <laughs> Not and, directly. And, and let's not forget, Dave, that it was transliterated as well, not just translated. Mm -hmm. So context yeah. and meaning and all of that was just like, oh, uh, no, let's, let's put it this way. This sounds a little bit more palatable for the, you know, for the masses or whoever, it, you know, this is intended for. Mm -hmm. But the, the beauty of the language is that it paints word pictures. And you can mess around with the uh, with the with the specific words all you like, but the word picture remains the same. Exactly. You know. Um, so, uh, you know, I found that uh, the the easiest way to actually get the the proper meaning. Now, I'm gonna have to step back a second. I've, have I um, gone through my little example of what Paleo Hebrew, how Paleo Hebrew works with you? Mm, I mean, in regards to its pictorial, so pictorial language, yeah? Yeah, how, yes. how it compares to English. No, no, you haven't done that part now. No, so go through. Right. Okay. So let me give you a little demonstration. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to describe a film to you in English mm -hmm. and you have to guess what the film is. Okay. Okay. So a man on the autistic spectrum recounts his life to strangers. What's the film? To strangers, the only thing I can think of is Rain Man. Okay, Rain Man. So what happened there is in the left-hand side of your brain, right? You heard the words I was speaking. Mm -hmm. You fetched the words and the meanings of those words, mm -hmm. and then you compared those words to a list of films you'd seen. Yes. Okay. And you guessed mm. at, at Rain Man. Yes. Okay. Right. So now I'm going to tell you the same film. I'm not going to tell you if you're right or not. Mm -hmm. right? I'm going to tell you the same film in Paleo Hebrew. Right. So Paleo Hebrew is a language of pictures, as, as I said. Yes. So I'm, so I'm going to use emojis. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to describe emojis. You're going to have to sort of image them in your head. Yes. Okay. So man running, mm -hmm. a, a few trees, a park bench. 
Okay. A box of chocolates. I got it. I got it. A shrimp <laughs> and a boat. <laughs> right. Forrest Gump. <laughs> exactly. Now, when I was Im- so t- describing those images, yes. right, the left hand side of, you, of your brain could not get involved mm. because it could not analyze mm-hmm. those images. Yes. It can analyze words, mm. but it can't analyze images, right? So the left hand side of your brain was cut out of the process. As you were imaging those words, mm. at some point, right, probably around park bench, maybe box of chocolates, right? It was you the trees. Knew. As soon as you said the trees, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. But at some point, you knew what that film yes. was without a doubt. Totally. You, you didn't have to be, you didn't have to guess, right? You just knew it welled up from inside you. You knew what it was yes you might you you've probably got it at the trees but as soon as i said i said park bench yes uh, then both it was like you knew it, it was like no doubt about it whatsoever right yes right so the point about that is um that set of pictures could only mean forrest gump mm. it can't mean rain man it can't mean anything else but forrest gump yes yeah and you have to take all those pictures so that you know you, mm. you don't you, you know so um that's the difference between between um you know paleo hebrew and english and the whole of the old testament was written in that language exactly that you Ex- know what it means yeah you don't have to guess yeah there's no okay? second guessing no right and it's not it's not like um it's not about uh well okay it's not allegorical it's not, um, you know, airy fairy, mm-hmm. but if you if you imagine, it might sound airy fairy if you yeah. look at it yes. in that, you know. Yes, that's an excellent point. Most definitely in a pictorial format, of course. Exactly. It's like, what on earth is all this stuff? Okay, they were doing that. They were okay, but right. when once you put them together and read it as it's supposed to be read, then it makes sense. Yes. Right. I mean, just, uh, you know, another example is uh, the word for angry, okay, is nose. (laughs) Okay. Why is that? Because this is a a physical, pictorial, experiential language, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, what happens, right, when you get angry? I'll tell you, yeah, exactly. I was going to say air, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you start to frown. Nose, yeah. yeah. Mm, So the word for anger is nose. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, so so when it, when it, it translates, we'll look at it and it says, uh, the most high is slow to nose. What? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's like almost impossible to, to, uh, to try and translate this language into one of these horrible Western languages, right? But um, because you know how um, when I was showing you the Paleo Hebrew, you had to take every one of those letters, every uh, pictures, yeah, yeah, all of them together, right, yes. and and get the meaning. Mm-hmm. In English, it's, it's the other way around. You you know, English words have might have eight meanings, exactly. Right? But you choose the one meaning out yes. of the eight. Yes, yes. And then say, oh, that's what it means. Mm. But, you know, from a Paleo-Hebrew perspective, no, it doesn't mean that no. only. Yeah. You know, forest, you don't get Forrest Gump from trees <laughs> on its own. Yeah. <laughs> no, so so um, one way of, uh, of actually getting a fuller meaning of one of the words in, in, in the Bible is to look at different translations of that one word. So one translator will might pick, let's say the word was Forrest Gump, okay? Mm. <laughs> one one person, one translator might pick trees. Another translator might might say park bench. Yes. Another translator might say box of chocolates. Mm. And and like, okay, you from all these translations, you might get different sort of uh, ideas, yes. but you take the meanings together. Now you've got the word for a scam and you know what it means. Yeah? Yes, totally. So so that's that's why it's so it's such a wonderful language because no matter how you try and mistranslate it, mm-hmm. there's always a way to, to see it as a word picture. It's uh it's something that really you can get your teeth into, and it's not it's not yes. something which you do for a week or so or maybe a couple months or maybe a day no it's something you invest a lot of time into 
um, and it's it helps to I, I would say it helps to enrich you as a person no matter your nation if you are you know uh, quote unquote black even more but for all people to 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 really get that that this understanding this inner standing this overstanding of what was written um and what's been done it's it it, it, it put it gives you it puts you in the driver's seat it's beautiful it really is when you when you start understanding it and uh you know you start discovering things in in the book yeah um that that are just like just amazing yeah because yeah. all right for an example um i was looking into uh this character melchizedek oh the king of righteousness yes and um I noticed that uh, the same incident of Abraham meeting Melchizedek was written in the book of Jasher. But in the book of Jasher, it's, it puts his name as Antonizedek. Wow. And, and Antonizedek was a Canaanite king that Joshua encountered. Okay. So I decided I wanted to, to, to make sure and, and show that Antonizedek, that Abraham, apparently met in Jasher was not the same Antonizer that that, that, uh, that um, Joshua encountered. Mm -hmm. So I looked in the book of Jubilees, right, to find out exactly which Jubilee, you know, the, the yes, date. Yes, the date, yes. That Abraham met um, Melchizedek and then compare that with a date that when, when Joshua met, uh, met Antonizadek. And what I realised was just looking at the dates and stuff that um, I found out the reason why the most high made the Israelites wander in the desert for 40 years, specifically 40 years. Oh. <laughs> because, um, uh, okay. The, uh, the Moses um, was, was talking to the, uh, the Pharaoh mm -hmm. in the 49th Jubilee. Okay. Yes. And when you add up, when you go into the book of Jubilees and you, you look where it says about um, about the Israelites wandering in the desert, right? And you add it up, you find that the Israelites took took possession of Canaan exactly on the 50th Jubilee, which oh, is wow. the only time they could have taken it. Yeah. Because the Jubilee is the year where all property goes back to its original owner. And it turns out that the land of Canaan was never the land of Canaan. It was the land of Shem. And Canaan took it. <laughs> Canaan decided he didn't like his, his allotment. And he went and took Shem's land. So it was never meant to be the land of Canaan. It was always the land of Shem. And in the 50th Jubilee, the descendants of Shem took back the property because that was the only time they could have taken it back. Yeah. In a Jubilee year. So it was like, oh, you know, it, again, it's just this wonderful um, uh, discovery, wonderful kind of feeling of achievement just to, mm. to find something that's not, you know, ordinary, just not spelled out in the book. Yes. That you can go, oh, oh that's why. Oh. This, this is it. This is it. And it's verifiable by the book, by the yes. manuscript. You know, yeah. we're not, we don't have to go to Josephus maybe and try and get some extra information, historical quote unquote information, even though people will say jo Flavius Josephus, his sources aren't the best and he's not credible and all this kind of stuff. It's it's there in perpetuity. You know, what mm -hmm. he's written down is, is there so we can utilize it. If you want to, you know, some people will say, I don't believe his, his writings. That's down to you, but it's there as yeah. a source. Mm hmm. So yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 really exciting. I mean, lo uh, understanding the language itself is uh, is a, a a kind of joyous thing. Yeah, just just understanding the way this language works, uh, and then applying it to to and um, not just the uh, the language, but applying what you know about the Israelites and uh, you know um these extra books that give you you know extra information yes. you, know? you apply it all together it's it's like uh, it's 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 a joy to it learn is, really. about you know the most high and 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 who you really are you know and what your part is in this in this story totally you know? totally and reconnects you back to being you know 
we're not just on a hunk of rock hurling 27,000 miles through the through the, the you know the solar system and all this kind of stuff we're special mm-hmm. you know we're special well, people that's what that's what i believe the flat earth was all about um because it you know i don't think it's an accident it came along when it did yeah because right now there are people there are you know hundreds of thousands of people who got into the flat earth yeah who who didn't automatically fall for the lies of the government Indeed. <laughs> because because they knew you know our governments have been lying through their teeth exactly <laughs> where we live and you know when this this bullshit came along it was like oh they're lying again you know yeah. yes um and and yeah the, the thing about the flat earth is you know you realize that okay it means that there is a creator exactly it means this place is a created place and it's safe it was designed for us to have us in it yeah so there is no there's no such thing as a shortage this this place has been designed for abundance mm. yeah there's no there's no way that we can be overpopulated no there's there's you know it's it's the lies of this system fall fall away when you realize it's a, you know we live in a flat earth you know enclosed system yes you know, that, that the most high created for us this is it. it 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 takes out all of the the scientism even though the you know the the the, the globe and all of that stuff was wasn't it a priest who came up with the no no the priest came up with the 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 big bang theory big bang it? theory yes <laughs> George Lemaitre, yeah. <laughs> See, it's like, wow. come on, people. Oh no, you know that the Bible, it's wicked, and you know all of the all of the wars are over. You know the majority of the wars, even, have been over religion and stuff, which is true. But what is religion? Religion is when you restrain, when you bind, when you hold mm-hmm. someone back. That is the root religio of religion, and that's exactly yes. what it's been done. That's prescribed. Yeah. That's the prescription, the prescription, and, and and the action which is desired. Hence, they've done it. Yeah, and the Old Testament is not a religious book. No, it's a book of, it's a book of uh, history, law, and guidance. Mm-hmm. That's it, mm-hmm. for one people specifically. Yeah, written by the ancestors, you know, or our ancestors, for their descendants in this time, right yeah. now. More, most importantly this time right now yes you know because it's, this is a moment that uh, this book has, has been point, you know, was pointing at the last days we're in them right now you know <laughs> um, and literally um, you, can, you can actually point to exactly in the book where in the book we are because um, it's lining up people were laughing at us when we said you know the end of slavery is uh, August tw- 2019 yeah, obviously we're using a Roman calendar, so exactly. you know who knows exactly when that is. But the Gregorian but, years and stuff, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? We knew we were in the season, mm-hmm. and you know people laughed at us because on on August twenty second, said, "Ah, oh, you didn't leave, see." Um, but what they what they failed to notice is that if you read um, Genesis fifteen fourteen, because most people just look at fifteen thirteen. On 1514, it says, that nation, the one that enslaved us, that nation shall I judge. And afterwards, they shall leave with great substance. So it's saying, right, that before the worldwide exodus, there's going to be a worldwide judgment. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm. I wonder what could be considered a worldwide judgment that might be happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Tied in very nicely, sir. <laughs> and then and then think about, right, who is the what is the only demographic of people that are en masse refusing this poisonous vaccine? Let me see. I think uh, mm. the, the people who have been mm. um misnomered as BAM, BAMI, mm. BAME. <laughs> BAME. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, it's all lining up. It's no accident. This is all, you know, all hell has broken loose at the end of the four hundred years. You know, unprecedented things happened uh, at the end of the four hundred years. No accident whatsoever. In fact, when I did my video called "Prophecy and Judgment," right, um, I did it in two thousand eighteen, I think. Um, I said, 
you know, uh, we, this was just after the uh, first eclipse uh, across oh, America. Yes, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. I said, you know, mark my words before, you know, between now and, you know, 2024, we're going to see some amazing stuff happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we've already seen amazing stuff happen. Not only, yes. not only sort of amazing weather events, oh, and uh, you know unprecedented things like you know the deserts blooming in Saudi Arabia yes. and stuff like that. You know, fish returning to the the Dead Sea and mm. things like that. Plagues of um, locusts and, and all kinds of stuff as well taking place. Focus, yeah. There you go, we're back. So yeah, here we are. There we go. About all this stuff because it's all it's all been written. It's already been the story's already done. Most definitely. Most definitely. Another um enlightening, edutaining conversation, uh, Dave. I, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Trustfully, the uh, the listeners have have a lot of notes taken now, <laughs> and we'll be going back to do some additional research. But um, amazing, amazing, um, blown away. I think you made some some very poignant connections. Um, I think for people who are just kind of waking up and have no idea of of the detail we've gone into, this will be a, an excellent resource tool for them. I hope so. Um, there's a, there's still a lot more to find out. But, you know. Exactly, exactly. If you're not learning, you are dying. And you mm. know, reference that manuscript. There's a lot more stuff to to be uncovered and to be um un unfolded. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to be of, of some assistance to people. Most definitely. Um, Dave, where is the best place people can get hold of you? <clears throat> Right. Well, um, I've got I've got a website, um, allegedly Dave dot com. Um, my uh, my YouTube channel. Well, a lot of the yeah. stuff that I've been putting up lately is, uh, has been taken down within about 20 minutes. Exactly. Um, I was going to get into that, actually, Dave. You, I think the last <laughs> four videos you've put up, I think, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so literally, if you put um, allegedly Dave into YouTube or um, BitChute, or um, I think library is going away, but Odyssey um, or library while it's still here, yeah. you'll find my stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Make sure you go over and, and check out some of Dave's content in reference. What was the, what's the name of the video you did when you, we did the, um, I think it's about an hour and a half, maybe two hour presentation. And you was talking about um, paleo Hebrew and you had some videos with the sound and all that. What, what's right. It's, it's called the language of creation. That is an excellent video. I suggest everyone go over to Dave's channel, watch that one first, and then obviously go, go through the plethora of other information he's got on there. But watch that one first. You will be blown away. I won't give any spoilers out, but <laughs> <laughs> go and check that out. It's, a, it's an excellent watch. It's an excellent watch. Cool, cool. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend.